Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 19th, 2022, around 2 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for multiple tropical cyclones to be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next couple of weeks and a potential system that could be impacting the Lesser Antilles over the next several weeks. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that we have a couple of things going on today. First of all, in the Caribbean, we have the remnants here of Invest Area 93L. We can see that the main area has actually begun to cross over, and this, I believe, here is the associated area of energy. We have another area of energy that's just kind of hanging back here, kind of some of that remnant energy that is impacting portions of the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize. And this area will continue to kind of just drift over the next several days and impacting the same areas could lead to a pretty significant flash flooding concern there over the next couple of days. And in the tropical Atlantic, we have a tropical wave that has now emerged off of Africa. This is ha this definitely has garnered some interest over the last couple of days. And some of the models are suggesting that a new tropical wave that is over Africa could come out here and form in the main development region by late June or early July. So let's go ahead and figure everything out here. Taking a, a real quick look here, the overview of the tropical Pacific, we have tropical storm blasts and tropical depression Celia. These pose no significant land concerns over the next several days. And in the Atlantic, at least for the next five days, there is no tropical development expected. Now, looking at the overall sea surface temperature pattern here, we notice that the overall pattern is very favorable for activity here. We notice that we have some pretty substantial warming in the main development region at this particular point in time. This could definitely lead to intense storms later in the season. We've had some subtropical cooling and more warmth out here in the Gulf of Mexico and southwestern Atlantic. And that seems very much primed and ready to go. And one of the reasons for that is because we've had this ridge of high pressure that's been further up towards the north. And that has led to reduced uh, trade winds across the tropical Atlantic here, which has led to an increased warming period. And that warming period is very substantial. But among with that warming period, we've also had consistent westerly winds here. And these westerly winds in the low levels combined with the upper level easterlies here of the tropical easterly jet, basically a, a kind of like your jet stream, uh, but it is about that 18,000 feet or so. So it's about the mid-level, mid and upper level jet here of easterly winds combined with low level westerly winds that definitely leads to cyclonic vorticity in this area or spin in the atmosphere. And that has been leading to these strong tropical waves that we've seen for the last several years. And we already noticed the spin in this tropical wave emerging off of Africa, south of the Cabo Verde Islands, which is right here. So this is certainly one of the favors uh, that these low-level westerly winds are doing. These are helping to spin up areas of low pressure. And that certainly gets the ball rolling for what could be a very, very historically active 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Now, if we look in the upper levels here, this is the CFS, the climate forecast system, the 500 millibar potential um, anomalies here on basically looking at the strength of the ridge in the, the middle part of the atmosphere. And what we notice if we roll this out through August, September, and October, our peak months during the hurricane season, we notice that we have a stronger than normal ridge up here in the North Atlantic here. And this is very important for us several reasons. A stronger ridge up here to the north allows for storms to be pushed further and further west here. So you imagine that a storm coming off the island or coming off of, you know, the coast here of Africa, it can't just turn up into this big ridge of high pressure because this ridge is like a wall. And that wall is very stout on the model forecast here. It's a very stout wall that storms cannot penetrate into. So they're basically forced westernly, and that definitely increases risks for the Caribbean and this entire area. This certainly gives those enhanced risks for landfall potentials and the potential for more tropical cyclones and more hurricanes to be impacting the land. And so that's why I really think that this year there's a very high potential of seeing, or certainly a greater than average potential of seeing a hurricane especially a major hurricane impacting portions of the islands or somewhere within the Caribbean. 
And then there's also a pretty substantial threat here of systems in the Gulf of Mexico, especially in the central Gulf, central and eastern Gulf of Mexico, I believe is where we, we could be seeing a pretty substantial threat. And then in the southwestern Atlantic Basin as well towards the Bahamas and Florida, I definitely think there's certainly that potential for a greater than average chance of seeing a at least a tropical storm, if not a hurricane in this region. And then out here off the, the coast here, there definitely could be some land concerns all the way up and down the east coast this year from potential systems that uh, might recurve around that big, uh, you know, high pressure that's sitting up here in the upper levels. Now, there's been talk about what could be coming down the road here, and we're going to transition now to the model forecast for a potential system in the main development region, a potential tropical cyclone that could be forming in the MDR here by late July, or I'm sorry, by early you know, July, late June, you know, June into early July. And I, I do certainly believe that could be a possibility. So if we look here at the GFS, this is the 12Z run, the 850 mil hour vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And uh, for context here, again, we want a storm. If we're going to have a storm, we want it to look like that. Okay. That was a hurricane blast a couple of days ago. All right. So on the GFS forecast, we actually noticed that there's a system that tries to spin up here in the short term. That's not going to happen. That's just likely GFS doing GFS things. But we notice in the long range here that we actually do have a tropical wave. This is late uh, June here. So this is June 29th. There's a little bit of a signal of a tropical wave here. You can kind of see those kinked isobars there or lines of constant pressure. Basically, this indicates to me uh, that we do have a tropical wave in this general vicinity. Now, if we take a look here at the upper level environment, we do have some pretty strong upper level winds uh, cutting across this area, although they generally are semi sort of in line with the overall trade wind flow. There's no screaming westernlies in the upper levels out here. So that certainly is a positive thing. And there certainly seems to be some moisture with a potential system down here. But look at all this dry air that is to the north that is kind of lurking and that does kind of get surged into this region here now on the european forecast the zero z euro it certainly kind of doesn't really suggest much until it gets to the islands where here towards the windward islands we see a potential storm that ends up developing and that actually continues in the long range and that continues into the caribbean we saw this uh, semi sort of thing similar to Elsa uh, and Brett. Uh, Brett, of course, was in 2017 and Elsa was last year. Uh, I believe it was last year. But this certainly has that potential feeling of a Brett or potential Elsa type repeat here on the Euro. And if we look at the upper level environment on the Euro, it actually is a little bit more favorable uh, on the euro there actually is somewhat of an outflow pattern here on the euro of course this is the longer range this is 216 hours so this is late uh, june here but it definitely goes to show some interest here on the model uh, that we could be dealing with a tropical cyclone approaching the lesser antilles here uh, by late june and on the forecast here on the ensemble forecast this is the gfs ensembles and we noticed that even on the ensemble forecast, this is uh, a 210 hours. So this is not extremely long range. Uh, this is by 1 a.m. or I'm sorry, 2 a.m. Uh, Tuesday, June 28th. And we noticed that in these red areas here, these are potential areas where we could be seeing a storm. So all of these areas indicate, all these numbers indicate where a storm could be. And we definitely see that a storm could be approaching the islands here within the next couple of weeks. And that's certainly not something that I, I kind of throw out there. There's definitely model support for it. I mean, and if we look here at the European ensembles, curiously enough, look at the Euro. Semi the sort of same thing. There definitely seems to be the number of European ensembles suggesting much of the similar thing. And some of these, you know, 1,006, 1,004, 1,008, you know, 994 it looks like. So, you know, there's definitely the potential for something to be in here over the next couple of days and it certainly, or next couple of weeks rather, and it certainly would not be surprising. The one thing that this does have going against it is really the fact that we're going to be having some dry air up to the north 
and that dry air uh, off towards the northeast and that dry air could be surging in on the system and potentially limiting the amount of you know convection this can generate uh, but again, all signs definitely point towards a very busy hurricane season, certainly looking at the potential for uh, widespread impacts to portions of the islands and the United States and elsewhere this year. So certainly prepare now for these potential massive storms as we head into the peak of the hurricane season. All right. Well, that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.